the Sony a7 III was one of the best-selling mirrorless cameras in the past few years, and it was considered a game-changer with its specifications and price point. But is it still a good option to buy in 2023? How does it stack up against all the newer cameras that are on the market right now? In this video, I will go over some of the pros and cons for this camera, my experience in using it, and who this camera is really for. And if you are looking to get yourself a new camera, I hope I can help you decide whether this camera is still worth it or not for you to buy today. When the Sony a7 III was released in 2018, it was groundbreaking for the mirrorless camera industry. It is considered Sony's entry-level pro camera and all-rounder hybrid camera, meaning it is good for both video and photo but just not at the top of the game. Let's first talk about the pros of the Sony a7 III. The first one is the price. Since Sony released the a7 IV last year, and because the a7 III was very popular at the time of its release, there are a lot of used items still in good condition currently being sold on the market. Of course, if you buy it new, it will set you back 2000 US dollars, which is not cheap if you compare it with the newer A74, which costs around $500 more. But if you look at the second hand market, you will find a lot of crazy deals. Generally, the A73 is now offered at around 14 to 1500 US dollars for the body only, but there have been some deals where people are offering 1500 US dollars, including with the lens. But it really depends on your area and the supplies around you. That way, the money you save from buying a Sony a7 IV can be invested to buy a better quality lens. I'd say it will be hard to beat the price range of the Sony a7 III that performs and has all the specs that it has. Second pro is that the Sony a7 III is basically a professional level camera. It offers 24 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor which can capture beautiful detailed photos and videos. It also has great low light performance capabilities with a usable ISO up to 12,000. The autofocus is very fast and accurate. It has eye autofocus and animal eye autofocus for you who's into wildlife photography. It can shoot 10 frames per second so it is also good for sports photography and it is also good for landscape photography and portraits. In terms of video, the a7 III is also a really good performer. It has in-body image stabilization, it captures 4K video up to 30 frames per second and full HD up to 120 frames per second. However, this is also a con for this camera and I will explain about this further when we get into the cons. The third pro for this camera is that it has dual card slot which means it offers you more capacity or you can separate your video files from your photo files. And this is a feature that not all other cameras could offer. Another pro is that this camera is weather sealed so it will be a relief for taking it outside to do landscape or outdoor photography. Also, the battery life for this camera is incredible. In most situations, you could get through an entire day of shooting with just one battery. And not to forget that you have an incredible amount of lens choices available for the Sony E-mount system, whether it is from the Sony lens lineup or from third-party brands such as Sigma, Samyang, Tamron, and so on. Which makes up to another important thing to consider, and that is, sometimes it would be better to invest in better lenses than in another body because detail and sharpness or certain characteristics you get out of the photo and not from the body. But on top of all these pros, the one thing I highly value is the crop mode feature. This mode lets you change the focal length without swapping lenses. This is especially useful in video where it doesn't decrease the resolution. Whereas in photos, although there is a decrease in the resolution, but it's still plenty enough if you only use it for social media purposes. This way, you can save even more money from buying multiple lenses or routing for a zoom lens but then sacrificing the aperture. Now let's talk about the cons the Sony a7 III has, because however I love this camera, it's definitely not perfect. The first thing I wish this camera have is a flip screen. For example, if you like to vlog, then you have no way to check how your shot is gonna look like. Even when doing photography, if you're shooting at a low angle and vertically, it would be a pain in the ass to properly check your screen. Second con is what I've mentioned before, and that is the Sony a7 III offers 4K video up to 30 frames per second and Full HD up to 120 frames per second. In the market right now, other newer cameras offer 4K up to 120 frames per second which of course will give you higher quality slow motion. Of course this is really important if you need that extra quality for more professional production so you might as well save up a little bit more because in the long run it will be more efficient. However, if you're someone who just wants to play around with video work every now and then
then, then I have to say the Sony a7 III is perfectly fine. Another common complaint is the complicated menu system. The Sony a7 III has the older Sony menu system and it is a bit of a hassle and difficult to navigate at first. But honestly, when you have really set up the functions according to your needs, I don't think it's considered complicated. Besides, after using it for a while, even when I'm looking for a specific menu in the menu page, I don't even think it's a con. Another few minor cons that could be better on this camera is the stabilization. Although I did mention this in the pros, but it is just because it has stabilization, but it's not the absolute best, especially if you compare it to other newer cameras. But of course, these newer cameras come at a much higher price. The second minor con is the back LCD screen resolution and quality. In bright daylight, it can be hard to see the screen. Especially if you're planning to do a lot of video with this camera, it would be nice to get an external monitor. That's basically it for the cons. Nothing majorly bad about the Sony a7 III. Obviously, there is a lot of feature that it is lacking, but for the price point, you really can't complain. So who is this camera really for? Well, it really comes down to your needs and how high the final product needs to be, and more importantly, your budget. If you're just starting out, but you want to go into the full frame system, or you want to upgrade from the APS system, it's kind of an entry level professional camera, and it was once the best hybrid camera on the market. Even now, it's still more than capable of delivering excellent results, especially when you're doing photography and want to dabble in videography, because photo technology hasn't advanced too much. And mainly newer camera bodies that are out right now, I'd say are more leaning towards video functions and better autofocus systems. So the a7 III can keep up with modern cameras when it comes to photos. But nowadays the mirrorless camera market has really expanded and there are many insane cameras that definitely will outperform the a7 III. And if you want the best quality or you want to get into more professional video work and take it seriously, then it will be better for you to save up a little longer and look for a different body. But if you like to do both, then it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're doing this by yourself and trying to be in front of the camera a lot of the times, making YouTube videos and whatnot, then I wouldn't really recommend the a7 III. Also, there are apps that you can use your phone as a monitor and also you have the option to buy an external monitor. But using the apps will be a pain because the a7 III is an older model and a lot of the apps don't really work well with an old firmware. And if you're opting to get an external monitor, that would be great in the long run. But it would mean extra budget for you to spend initially. So really take your time about what you're going to use this camera for and make decisions based off of that. If you found this video helpful, a like and subscribe would be highly appreciated. Hopefully, I've managed to help you make a decision. But if you do decide to buy a used item, do yourself a favor and check the camera's condition and make sure the camera is working fine. Alright, that will be it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.